But like every time I'm on a meeting, like every time I close them, it's not because I'm like this crazy salesperson. Like it's, it's not mm. because of that. It's really because I care. And I feel like in this agency space, people really try to do tricky stuff or to be mm. like Belfort or something. But like <laughs> yeah. at the end of the day, you just have to care, you know, like you yeah. really have to just understand the brand and they don't even try to understand it. Oh, right. Welcome back to a brand new video. And we've got another student interview today. I'm talking with Saron. Saron went through my mentorship and in less than six months, she was able to pretty much go from zero to close to $20,000 per month. We dive deep into some of these systems, strategies, processes that she's used to scale her agency to that point. I will talk about routines. We talk about the law of attraction. We talk about patience, her incredible mission of helping women of color. And I know you're going to be able to walk away from this video with tangible strategies you can implement in your own business to grow. So very excited for this. And without further ado, Let's go right into it. Uh, it's funny, I was actually going through, um, you know, while arranging the meeting, I was going through the, the Instagram DMs. Um, I think like the first message you sent me was like, basically you liking the, the YouTube videos. Uh, and just fast forward like a few months, <laughs> you're on the, on the, technically on the YouTube channel. Uh, yeah. So yeah, it's, it's been a <laughs> <Manifestation>. journey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> How long has it been? Like it's 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 been a a short one, I feel. Mm, I started my agency in February, I think. Okay. And um I did one course, but that course wasn't really like going into like e-commerce and stuff like that, so mm. I was really looking for information online. And yeah, your videos are still helping me. Like I'm still using the outreach method you explained in mm. in one of the YouTube videos, so that was extremely helpful. Now you need to tap into the, the automated sales funnel, uh, yeah, <laughs> which is going to be fun. Uh, and I mean, I, cause if you don't mind me asking you, um, how much are you currently at with, with your agency? Cause you told me you, 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 uh, got into the, the, the 10, cl uh, 10 K club or the six figure uh, course club. Um, but I think you surpassed that even, right. You told me like you, you were itching close to, uh, to 20 K per month. Yeah. Um, like I surpassed 10 K and now it's, uh, on the way to 20. 20k so yeah because of your course as well i know now how to price <laughs> i didn't know that before so that made a huge difference as well because i just gave a flat fee to every single client and yeah that wasn't really working out mm -hmm. so um yeah but you are right i have to tap into the automated sales funnel definitely mm -hmm. And and that's a, a topic that I want to. I mean, and by, by the way, Salon, uh, these are very casual conversations, uh, so there's really no uh, structure to them. But uh, that that's a topic mm -hmm. that I want to tap into because um, one of the things that that you were talking about. I mean, you're a, a very hardworking person. Um, like I know that. I mean, we'll we'll yeah. we'll, 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 uh, we'll dive into it, right? Uh, and you have no problem uh, scaling the agency by onboarding more clients because you love <laughs> chaos. I feel right. Um, but one of the things that we, we we talked about is is the fact that like. Uh, to get to those bigger numbers, you were going to start going um, way harder on the performance driven incentives and, and charging like percentages and all that stuff. To give me a bit of an idea and to give the audience a bit of an idea, like what percentage of clients uh, do you have under that performance driven incentive or like where you take a bit of a, a percentage and, and how many of those are, are fixed? Because you can do both, by the way. We talk about it in the mentorship, like mm -hmm. you can do both, you know, fixed as well as performance driven incentives. But how does that look like for you now? So currently I have um, seven clients. So three of those have this performance driven sensitive because I just um, signed them recently, but the other ones, these are actually like contracts. So it's mm. a fixed fixed price, but I'm trying to renegotiate it now. Okay. And um, one of the, the, the things that we also talked about is uh, the importance of having that A player, right? Uh, I know you've had a, a long journey with team members and all that stuff. Um, now you're obviously looking for, for another team member, but uh, to give the audience a bit of an idea, right? When you go through that hiring process that we talked about in the mentorship, what are some key traits that you've seen really work for the people that are in your team? Um, and also what are some of the, the traits that you've seen just don't, don't really quite match, you know, mess or, or just don't really quite match the uh, the culture of, of the agency? Um, I think one of the most important characteristic for sure is to just like to have someone or to be someone who is just able to 
think outside of the box, I guess, like you don't have to tell them what to do. They just, you know, see the problem, for example, I don't know, the Facebook ads aren't performing as they should. And instead of telling me, oh, they are not performing well, um, the contractor is just by himself getting um, new ideas, researching stuff, maybe reading an article, watching videos, like just mm -hmm. someone who works independently and likes to use their brain. I think that's the single most important trait in a contractor because everybody can have the skills, but if the person doesn't have the drive and just the personality of someone who likes to over deliver, it's very hard to scale your agency because you have to constantly be at them and tell them like, you have to do this and that. And mm. uh, yeah, if you have someone who just does it, it makes everything much, much, much easier. Yeah. And I, I remember, um, cause we spoke about, right. I remember like, especially before joining the mentorship, uh, you were doing a lot of work yourself. Right, like it was, mm -hmm. it was not very hands off for you, and uh, now I believe it's it's a bit more hands off, right? Uh, like you yeah. can breathe at least. Uh, yeah. What are some of the protocols that that have helped you? Like uh, maybe some of the protocols that then obviously you know uh, we talk about in mentorship. Like what are some of the protocols that you've implemented in your agency for your team that have really helped you take it to the next level? You don't have to get like super in depth, but like what's what are come, you know so, some of the things that that have helped you um, really become more hands off with with your agency. So the one thing that really, really helped me was uh, just to outsource communication to my team. Mm -hmm. um, before your mentorship, I was a little bit too scared to do that. I was like, oh, I am the business owner. I have to be the one who is answering everything and stuff like that. So I also didn't have really trust because I was just starting and I was afraid that they might say something that is not aligned with my agency and stuff like that. But yeah. there were days where I was on Slack like three hours straight, just answering every single question. Um, you know, after watching the modules on um, communication, I realized that this is one of the most annoying things to do in the agency and something mm -hmm. that can take so much time. And yeah, now my team does it and they do it very well. And I'm very, very happy about that. And yeah, that was one of the things that I really wasn't even thinking about outsourcing to my team. Mm -hmm. Were you, cause, cause it's a really good point, right? I feel like, uh, for those who started their agency, uh, it's, it's, it's a trap that, uh, you tend to fall into, right? Especially as a beginner entrepreneur where you think, oh, I have to do everything, my, you know, myself, especially when it comes to communication, because like you're the face of the agency, right? Mm. Um, did you realize that, like, were you surprised by the fact that they were actually able to speak and speak pretty well with clients? Like, did it take, uh, did it take you by surprise or did you have to hire complete different talent or people to undergo those new communication protocols? Um, yeah, the thing is like the majority of my clients are Germans. So actually all of them are German. So some speak English very well, some don't. So, uh, mm -hmm. for those who don't speak English, uh, who don't speak English that well, uh, I hired a VA and she also does the communication. Um, for those who do speak English well, my contractors just do it. And, um, yeah, in the beginning I was really like not trusting them. So I was on Slack all the time. I was like, okay, what is he saying? Okay. What is he saying? You know, I was monitoring everything mm -hmm. they said, but now I don't really look at it anymore. And it's just so blissful. Like sometimes I wake up and I see the messages and they reply to everything. And I'm like, oh, this is nice. <laughs> it's a nice feeling, right? <laughs> yeah. It really nice is. Feeling. And yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I didn't even thought about it like that. Mm. It could be so blissful. Yeah. I think it's, it's both, it was both a weakness, but also a superpower, right? Because I feel like um, one of the things about, well, I think I, 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 one of the things about a bunch of agency owners is like they take it way too, too, too extreme and they, they almost like to automate or streamline communication so much that there's almost no mm -hmm. communication at all, right? I think one mm -hmm. of the, your superpowers Aaron, has been the fact that you built such good relationships with your client. Like you really care about that component of like, you know, the, the agency uh, building, right? Like building those relationships. And that's why you get a bunch of referrals coming your way as well, right? Um, what do you think has been like, uh, you know, for people to kind of, because I'm a big fan of, of building those relationships and, and really treating it like what it is, which is a business to business relationship. What are some of the, it's a bit of a curveball, right? But what are some of the, the things or some of the things, you know, maybe that you do unconsciously that really help you build those relationships that really help you get people to really like you, right? And it, I feel like you're not like this, extreme extrovert and all this stuff but i think you just do it very very well right i feel like a lot of people think that you have to be this incredible extrovert and you know this people's person but i think you just have the right balance where like you do the work but you also have the relationship so yeah any any tips or anything that that you do that you value the thing is like i think it has a lot to do with my ideal client so my ideal client is obvious uh, is uh, for those who don't know is uh, a woman of color 
So I myself, mm -hmm. I'm a woman of color. So that makes it so much easier to just, you know, even start a relationship with them. Because um, before I started my agency, I actually I had an e-commerce store that wasn't doing that well. And just based on that, I can connect with them very well. And I know like what hardships they went through, especially when it comes to like uh, raising capital and mm. stuff like that. And I just really, really, really want to see them grow and to expand their business. And usually I'm also their target audience. So that is something that works very, very well. And that for the mm. first time ever, actually, I used my disadvantage, I would say, as an advantage. So I think that's one of the main reasons why I have yeah. such a close relationship with my clients. And, uh, you know, even when results aren't great, I really try everything to to make uh, to give them maybe another service or to help them in any other way or to give them free resources because mm -hmm. I really care that much. And I think they, they can tell just by yeah. the way you know, the, the feeling that they get, I guess. That's such a great point. And, and it comes to speak about the importance of building a monopoly agency. Like you're pretty much one player and that's pretty much, I mean, how many people are actually like uh, targeting specifically, you know, black women uh, in, in Europe, right? Uh, only in e-commerce stores, like not many, right? And so I feel like, mm -hmm. you know, you built, you've been able to build this monopoly agency, uh, which is really cool to see. I want to dig into, into uh, it, it a bit more, right? Because I feel like, um, you know, for, for the, the, the women watching this, right? Uh, what are some of the, the, the struggles that you've seen with this um, women founders? Because I know you're very vocal about this, like, I, I, you know, even in your Instagram bio, like, this is one of your missions. So, like, what are some of the, what, you know, what's some of the, the hardships or, or struggles that you see um, women facing when starting a business or in the e comm space uh, that you've been able to kind of identify and really help them solve and, and, um, and overcome? Mm -hmm. Well, my clients specifically, most of them, uh, their um, e-commerce store is uh, solves a problem that mostly women of color face. For example, hair care products, skin care products, or just even fashion that represents black women. And mm. they're overlooked anyways, you know, by like uh, big corporations and stuff like that. Some of them are getting, are getting the recognition they deserve since Black Lives Matter, but before that it was actually quite hard for them. So just me being like their target audience and seeing what they do and being someone who would buy from them and who helps them to make it successful is just also the side effect of that is also that other brands see that and they themselves, they don't really understand like mm -hmm. that black people do buy stuff. It's not really on their radar and stuff like that. They're quite overlooked as, as a buying power, especially in Germany. Like in America, it's completely different. But in Germany, yeah. like the black community here is so small, but it's still profitable. Like they still are able to scale. And the thing is like, they may target their products specifically to black people, but it's not like that only black people can use it. Any person of color, like a Latino can use it. A mm -hmm. Turkish person can use it. Anyone who has similar skin problems can use it. And I think that's what makes me stand out is because I see it before the big agencies see it or the big, mm. big players. And yeah, I think that's an advantage. And also they understand that I understand their brand. So yeah. I know like a lot of people forget this, but like you can be amazing in uh, Facebook ads and Google ads, but if you don't understand the brand, you won't really get the best results. Yeah. So yeah, I feel like a lot of people forget that they also have to stay true to the brand while brand uh, while uh, marketing the product mm -hmm. that's such a that puts a smile on my face because you've literally <laughs> hit so many incredible points that i think are, are going to be very valuable for, for people watching the fact that you know it, a lot of people are scared of like competition and saturation right uh, or like this big agencies but they don't realize that you can like these big agencies they're not very agile like they're targeting a, a really ma uh, mass market right like you know most brands that go to these common like big agencies you know they, they you know, I, I feel like there's been this transition, right, where where uh, niche brands are looking for niche agencies, right? Uh, especially because niche agencies can be very agile. And that's the power of building a monopoly agency. Not only that, but they love the fact that, you know, you really understand the brand. I would argue, right, and I do in the mentorship, I would argue that it's actually, it's it, it it's it's more powerful in a sales call to for them to understand that you resonate with, for them to see that you resonate with the brand, for them to see that you understand the brand, way more than any Facebook ad knowledge or any Google ads knowledge that, that, that you may have. Uh, it's, it's all about how much, they under, how much they understand the brand. Like they, they understand that you're an expert. They understand that you've got a team for that, right? But it's more about like you as an individual, as the agency owner, do you resonate with the brand? Do you understand the vision? Yeah, yeah. 
And I think that's why I have such a high closing rate. Like I was uh, looking at it, like uh, uh, my outreach to meeting, uh, my meeting to client rate, and it's like mm -hmm. over 80%. So uh, like the last time that's I got crazy. a no, I don't know what it was. It was a long time ago, actually. But like every time I'm on a meeting, like every time I close them, it's not because I'm like this crazy salesperson. Like it's, it's not mm. because of that. It's really because I care. And I feel like in this agency space, people really try to do tricky stuff or to be mm. like Belfort or something. But like <laughs> yeah. at the end of the day, you just have to care, you know, like you yeah. really have to just understand the brand. And they don't even try to understand it. You know, they may for them, they don't even reading the vision part of the website is even too much for them, you know? Mm. And I really, for example, I really dig deep. I read every article, every podcast, everything to really understand the brand. And I think as an agency owner, you should also take some type of pride in yourself and in your brand and to be at a point where you are like, I don't want to work with anybody. So it has to be like a two way thing, you know, where both parties say, okay, we can work. Because I think that's that's also another thing is I get a lot of referrals, but not everybody is a fit for me. And mm. I think, of course, it's hard because everybody wants to get clients, but I think it's even more powerful to say no to the wrong client. And that puts you in a very, very powerful position, I would say, but also makes you feel very abundant because you know you don't really need them. And at the end of the day, maybe someone else would be a better fit to them. So I think that takes a long time to get yeah. there. And that's, that's why you probably have such a high closing rate, because as you said, like, I don't think the, you know, I don't think that the, the, the hard closing tactics or gimmicks, you know, they may work once or twice, right? But in the long term, if you get the wrong client um, through the door, that's not going to be a fruitful partnership, right? Maybe you can learn a bunch, but like when you make it just no pressure and they generally feel like you care about the brand. Like I generally think if you don't do your homework before uh, the call, if you don't look into the brand, if you don't like actually care about, is this brand a good fit? Would I be able to add value to them? And and just completely focus on the sales. Like that is just plainly disrespectful. Like I, I generally believe that. Um, and that's, you know, it probably comes to show like why you have such a high closing rate. Um, on the topic of uh, abundance, because I think that's such a, a powerful point. Are there any things that have helped you get into that abundance mindset? Because you're just kind of like starting out, right? And and, and you would think, mm -hmm. well, you probably have a bit of scarcity mindset just, you know, still. Um, obviously, you're doing pretty well with your agency, but are there any things that have helped you get into that abundance mindset from early on? Yeah, I'm like a very big believer into the law of attraction. And that was also one of the reasons why I I chose you as a mentor because you actually are very vocal about it in your videos and you talk about it. You say you, you shouldn't rely on it and you should put in the work, but for me, it's kind of 50-50 because when I do outreach and I don't have the right mindset and I don't feel like I already close them or I already work with them, then it doesn't work out. So what I do, for example, is I write a gratitude list, I meditate, I really try to get my mindset right before I start to work. That's extremely, extremely important. And I feel like a lot of uh, people who start their agency who are not really into this woohoo stuff they don't really try to get their mindset right and I feel like that's one of the main reasons why they don't see the results is because they have the scarcity mindset they mm -hmm. really try so hard and they know like they put so much pressure into it but when you come from a place of abundance and when you already think when you're on the vibration that you think that you already have it then it's so much easier to close it because you you, you don't think it's far away and yeah that's I think that's the main reason why I scaled so fast. And yeah, sometimes obviously I'm not perfect. Sometimes I have days where I doubt myself and I'm like, oh, will this be like stop? Is it going to go away tomorrow? Mm, you know, but uh, overall without meditation and without gratitude lists and affirmations, uh, yeah, I wouldn't uh, be able to do that. Yeah, and, and it's important for, I mean, th that's a very powerful uh, concept. Uh, a lot of people think that it's just strategies, right? And it's a combination of both. Like if, you, if your yeah. mindset is, is not right, um, you're not you're probably not going to get results. Like if you're negative, if you want things quick, if, you, if you're if uh, you just thinking about yourself, for example, I feel I, I feel like a lot of people in this space are selfish, right? And I feel like one of the mm -hmm. things about you is, is you, you, you kind of like put yourself in the shoes of the client. And when you do that, it, it becomes pretty effortless. Um, so 100%, I mean, the mindset is, is, a, is a big component. How does that look like for you? Like, you know to, to dig a, a bit more into into like your routine and all that stuff um like do you wake up and and, and you get into the the dream life workbook and all that stuff that, that we talk you know that we talk about um the gratitude list and all that stuff or like how, how does it look like for you in terms of uh the mm -hmm. routines yeah i just wrote down a vision for every part of my life for like 
yeah, agency, like basically everything. And the first thing that I do is I, I read this after I wake up and then I meditate for like 15 minutes. I try to get to 15 minutes and then I um, say my affirmations out loud and write a gratitude list. And what I also do is, and I think that's extremely powerful, is like I write down what I'm grateful for and then I write down what I want, but I do it in the present tense. So I say like, I'm so happy and grateful that the client X, Y, and Z is working with me. And nine times out of 10, it really happens. <laughs> it's really crazy. Like I can look through it and I'm like, whoa. And every time they tell me like, oh, we get approached by agencies every single day. You are so lucky that we applied to you. And I hear this all the time and I'm like, wow, this stuff really works. A hundred percent. And, and uh, when you put in, you know, when it comes to the work as well, um, mm -hmm. Because I I, I I know you obviously put in the work as well. Um, how does that look like for you? Like when you when you start, like roughly how many hours do you work per day? I I, I can see that you're probably in like a, a co-working space, right? Um, so like, yeah. do you do you work from home? Like, do you like to change scenes? Like, uh, what, what's what's kind of like your your um, work setup? I actually have an office at WeWork. I'm currently okay. in a in a meeting room, but um, I have my own office here. So that really changed everything. Like I know, like in the agency space, they don't really talk about having an office. But mm -hmm. for me, I don't know why. Even when I was in uni, I had to go to the library to study. I couldn't do it from home. So I still live with my parents, for example. But I knew, like, if I would get my own office, it would put me in a position where I could afford my dream apartment. So yeah, um, yeah since I moved out, since I moved to this office, I tripled my income like my agency income because i was able to be so focused and it really mm -hmm. helped me to be inspired and to stay motivated because you see so many big uh, uh big brands and for example the irish um cons the, the irish of one of the irish offices what is it called like when you have to apply for a passport uh the cons consulate yeah exactly they're next to me for example so like okay it's like really cool to see so many like big um, offices and corporations and stuff. So what I do is like, I come here, I try to be here at like eight, I try, but it doesn't happen all mm -hmm. the time. And then I just work until I'm done. <laughs> yeah. So uh, sometimes it's earlier, sometimes it's till 10. Sometimes I even work till two. Yeah, it's it's sometimes it's it, get, it gets crazy, but um, mm. Yeah, I'm trying to take days off and I'm trying to um, look after myself because I can tell like my body doesn't like that type of lifestyle. Mm. But uh, yeah, honestly, what the, the very I, intense work life? Yeah, because um, yeah. yeah, obviously it's not that healthy. But I'm like, okay, I just started, and um, yeah, I'm also trying to get uh, to go through everything in your mentorship. So that's also something that I have to take time for. Mm. And yeah, but it's, it's quite a lot. Less. It's quite yeah, a lot. It's <laughs> a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah, yeah. If you really want to implement everything, then it's actually a lot. <laughs> and yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, so you don't, you don't have like, you don't have like a set um, work time. So like, you just basically go off like to do list, right? Until you get things done, you don't leave the office, or or how does it go? Mm. Uh, it depends, like. Um, most of the times, like, uh, for example, outreach and stuff like that, I do that f from a set time from 8 to 12. So that's mm -hmm. set. But sometimes there are like micro things or like sometimes I'm not happy with the performance of a campaign or something. And then I research and research and research until I'm done. And um, yeah, sometimes I don't know why, but sometimes I work better at night. Yeah. Um, much much more creative and uh, that's the time where I think about content ideas and stuff like that because I haven't gone into this as well yet so uh, I'm trying to use this time to really just focus on my systems and processes and that's also one thing that I really like about your mentorship is like you really give like they are all processes and systems that you need to run a successful agency so what I try is to just perfect them Mm -hmm. so that i have to work less in like next month maybe or the next two months yeah of course so it's, it's about putting those systems in place and then kind of and, and that will be intense but then those systems will take care of you um yeah and also in to term get, uh, yeah yeah go ahead, so, go ahead so also to get the performance on point i think like that's also something that a lot of people neglect it's like mm. 
How, like that, you, know, you actually you need to get results yeah. for clients. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's like you have to get results, you know, like good results. And you can't just, you know, like, of course, if you have the best contractor in the world, that's perfect. But yeah, you also have to put in the work, I feel like. And hmm. I think when you have certain knowledge about Facebook ads and Google ads, it actually helps you to close them because hmm. they can feel the energy. They know you know about it and uh, sure. that you understand it as well. Yeah, it gives you a, a complete different level of confidence. Uh, yeah. You know, also when you know about e-commerce strategy you know i think that that's a big component when you can tell them like hey look you know you're probably running ads to like the wrong offer let's let's shift your funnel around and you know without getting too techy or without getting too specific uh because maybe you bore them with 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 that but like um yeah i think i think that's that's really powerful like you walk there's a different type of confidence and when you match that with the amount of research that you put into into every single prospect with the fact that like you're a very specific monopoly agency it's it's, it's powerful it does help a lot <laughs> In terms of like the, the sacrifices um, that you've had to make, obviously you're you're still very young, um, and I, I believe you you finished uni, uh, like very recently, right? I actually did not finish. No. Okay. Well, so you, you my first time even saying it publicly. No, like uh, no, okay. I, I'm not. I didn't finish uni. Because I, I I believe when you told me uh, when we first spoke, like you were still at uni, but you were thinking of dropping out or yeah, correct? Okay. So you I still... you've left it. Um, I don't know if my parents will watch this. Spill the tea. (laughs) (laughs) Um, You don't have to, by the way, you don't have to, like... Yeah, but, yeah, it's, like, it's not on my mind anymore, let's say, like, that in a most diplomatic way. (laughs) Okay, okay, cool. But, yeah, I'm doing agency full-time. Okay, great. Um, What are some of the sacrifices that maybe you've had to do on on your uh, personal life or maybe, like, you know, seeing friends and all that stuff? Like, how do you approach that side of things? Because I know a lot of people watching are your age or younger or just a bit older um and they go how, how do i manage this and inevitably you're gonna have to make sacrifices if you want to be successful with anything in life so what what do you think are maybe some of the biggest sacrifices that you've had to make well the thing is like one of the most heartbreaking things was actually like losing a lot of friends like people where you were like oh they would be happy for you if you would be successful and if things work out for you but then like they're shady and stuff and you can tell mm-hmm. you know that they don't really clap for you that's i think one of the most heartbreaking things and i feel like every entrepreneur who has some kind of success went through this because it takes your full intention and you know you have to get out of your comfort zone and people will start to look at you funny like oh who does she think she is or what is she doing does she really think this can be successful and stuff and when you actually become successful then it's like backwards and it's like oh i knew you would be successful i knew you could do this and Mm. you know like i just came across a lot of fake people where i was like actually shocked and another thing is like just believing in yourself like people think that when people say this like believing believe in yourself believe in yourself but believing in yourself is actually so freaking hard like to actually put yourself in a position and to be like oh i'm doing this full time i'm putting my all into this like there's no plan b i don't know that's different like some nights i can't sleep but it's worth Mm. it (laughs) i don't know about you but i think when i made that decision to drop out i'm not saying you you've you've done that you made that decision but uh (laughs) when i when i made that decision i didn't believe myself too much like I, i feel like you don't even like I don't know about you, but at least me personally, like I didn't really believe in myself. I was like, I just know I have to take this gamble. Um, and by the way, you can, you know, I, I was still, you know, I still sign clients, you sign clients as well, uh, what's still in uni, but like you just kind of take the gamble without truly believing in yourself. And then you kind of get the confidence when you start skating and, you know, you then start believing in yourself. I'm not sure if it was like the same thing for you, but as like, I, I, I do agree with that, that I, I don't think like you just, wake up one day and you're like oh i believe in myself you know no you have to have a track record you have to get you know get those like initial small wins to then build up that confidence and i feel like a lot of people just don't really understand it they're like oh you know i don't really believe in myself and that that's completely normal you know like you yeah. need to get those wins to truly develop that that uh, self-belief and, and that self-confidence yeah but but for me it was also like to just be uncomfortable all the time you know, like every time I do, still, every time I do outreach, I'm like, there's the little feeling like, oh, are they going to reply? Are I going to mm. get a meeting? Like, it's still like that. And I feel like as long as you get out of your comfort zone, then you will really see who you really are because it really stretches you. And it puts into perspective, like, it just makes you feel like, okay, this is in my hands. Like, you're really the person who, like, your future is in your hand. And that's the type of um, responsibility I didn't have before. 
Mm-hmm. Because I'm also like, it's not just for me. I also want to set my family up the right way. You know, I also want to help them. And I also want to inspire other people that they can do the same. So I feel like that alone, like makes you work so much harder that you actually have like a tunnel vision where you're like, okay, there's no either or, like you have to get it done. Mm-hmm. It's like yeah. that deeper why that just fuels you. Yeah, exactly. And also like a tunnel vision, like you don't get distracted because the strike, like you say it all the time in the mentorship as well, like with Instagram and stuff. And in the time when I started my agency, I actually deleted Instagram, I think for six months or mm-hmm. something. But now I have to use it because it's like one of the main uh, outreach methods I use. But like that also helped a lot, you know, to just kill distractions and stuff. And yeah, after like when I was gone on Instagram and when I was really putting in hours, that's when I really saw like how many sacrifices I made because I wasn't really going out much. But that was also due to and I mm-hmm. didn't have that many friends left as well. Mm-hmm. So when you are in your 20s, that's actually like, I don't know, some people get scared by that. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I feel like it, it is, I'm not sure about you, right? But um, like get, getting vulnerable for a second, I think it is normal to question, you know, the, the, there'll be days where you question your choices, right? Like, oh, have I made the right decision? Like, is this is this worth it? Especially when you're not seeing results, right? Uh, because you made the sacrifices and and those sacrifices haven't manifested in results yet i'm I'm sure i mean did you ever have those days where you were like uh, i'm not sure if if you know i made the right decision or or like the, those days where your your self-belief was low mm, of course like there were days like that but the majority like the thing is like I I got results right away when I started. So I was in a very fortunate position. Mm. So I got like to, I think 3K when I was like, okay, I have to do this full time. Mm-hmm. And um, so I was already seeing results. I already knew, okay, what I'm doing, I'm doing something right. And I already knew that I can do the, provide the service even by myself. So I think I was in a little bit different position. But before that, I tried a lot of different things with e-commerce and stuff like they were all unsuccessful. But mm-hmm. deep in my heart, I wanted to be so, I wanted to be not just successful. I wanted to live my life on my own terms. And that was when my patience was really tested because for two years or something, I didn't see any results. And that's also one thing, like sometimes you are in the wrong business model. And yeah, I was, I'm happy that I'm now in the right one and that I see the results and that I have great people surrounding me that give me good, great advice and stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, now it's like, the more I scale, the more I'm scared to fail. I don't know, like they say, the higher you go, the, the lower you the go. The harder the fall. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and that's what I'm most scared of, is that I come to the position where I'm comfortable and then everything's gone. Yeah, you're that's, Yeah. Because where, where are you looking to take the agency? Like, where do you see yourself? Uh, you told me you, you want to get to that 50K per month mark in yeah. uh, in the end of the year, right? Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm pretty confident that you get there. Um, <laughs> But what do you think? What do you think needs to happen? What do you, What do you think are some of the changes that that you need to, or or maybe the person that you need to become, so on, uh, to get to that fifty k per month mark? I, like I think I have to be more like I need to know more what my worth is because I still have it sometimes that when I have a sales car or something, I still give them a lower price because I still think that I'm not worth the the actual price. So that's really something I have to work uh, on that I'm like, that the service is worth it, that I am worth it as an agency. And yeah, when I fix that and when I overcome this, I think I can scale to 50K. But and I also have to become a better leader because obviously before that, I never had people working for me. I never had a team. So having how, a team, how many how many are, are, are there in your team now? Three, like my VA okay. and two media buyers and Google and Facebook, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's really that really tested me because it's really like, OK, my VA, she just started recently. I'm really, really happy with her. But with my two media buyers, they were like there were like ups and downs, you know, mm. and that really tested, you know, who I am as a leader as well. So I'm also trying to become a much, much better leader to read more into it and to try to motivate my team in the right way. Mm-hmm. To kind of like wrap it up almost, um, what are some of the the traits you think you've developed as a leader that have helped you just steer the boat in the right direction? Because you're definitely doing something right, right? When it comes to leadership. So what are the, maybe some things that you've developed over these past few months because you've had this team or maybe also some of the things that you've you think you've done wrong and you fixed 
wrong, wrong thing was that I thought that everybody works like me, you know, like mm. over delivering or always doing better than the day before. Like not everybody is like that, unfortunately. And that some people need more guidance. Some people really need a step-by-step -step guide on how to do something. And uh, that was something that I was not familiar with. But one thing that I really wrote is to just speak my mind. I feel like also as a woman, we are afraid to, like women, actually most women are afraid to just be upfront because we don't want to be too bossy or something like that. But in this space, you have to be like that. Otherwise, they will, like everybody will just play with you. Um, that was really hard for me to just be like, okay, this, 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 and that has to be done. And there are no excuses to get it done or we can't work together, you know? Mm -hmm. And that was, that was a challenge to come to this point to just be like, yeah, you just have to do it. And yeah, yeah, that was really hard. Awesome. I think, um, <laughs> I mean, I've, I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed the, the conversation. I think uh, you dropped some, some value bombs and it is a really, really juicy convo. Um, do you have any, any final words, any like final comments, anything you want to uh, say to wrap it up? Yeah, I hope that uh, in December I can watch this video and be like, yeah, yeah, I'm 50K. <laughs> but uh, no, like I'm really, really grateful for your uh, mentorship because it, it really helped me a lot because there's also nobody like you out there who does both, like the hybrid service you know, the hybrid approach, who does Google and Facebook. And I feel like you also put in the brand into, like the brand is what matters the most, you know, to give them the best experience, to give them the 360 approach and stuff. And I feel like that's really missing in the e-commerce space. And um, yeah, I'm really grateful for your mentorship. So Thanks I hope well. in December I'm at 50K. I have no doubt. Uh, and, and that means a lot. And, and I want to obviously also acknowledge you um you never cease to to amaze me uh, every time you jump on on a, a round of one-to-one -one call uh it's like oh i just signed a new client and you know this and this and that <laughs> obviously there are also uh you know uh obstacles that, that we have to overcome but uh you know i, I, I want to acknowledge you for putting in the work uh for thinking different for being patient i think that's a a, a trait that people watching this can can really take away from from you and, and really caring uh, i think that's a that's a, a massive one uh, as well so Thank you so much for, for jumping on. We got it done. Uh, I'm, I'm excited to put this out on my YouTube. Um, and yeah, we'll, uh, we'll definitely uh, we will rewatch this uh, at the end of the year. I hope so. All right, then. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Bye bye. Take care. Take care. All right. All right. All right. That is that for the interview with Saron. Wow, that was a pretty wide ranging conversation, a very juicy one. I really hope you enjoyed it. Now, this is not for everyone, but if you're looking to start or grow your own e-com agency, an agency that helps e-commerce businesses, I don't, I don't just do a general agency. I don't talk about, uh, you know, building a content creation agency. We talk specifically about helping e-com brands and building e-com brands, as Saron said, we have a massive obsession with that. And so if you're interested in growing an e-com agency, to 10k per month in record breaking time. I recommend you check out the description box. And there you find a link to a scheduler where you can book in a time with myself and my team and we'll see if you're a good fit for the mentorship. Again, not for everyone, but if you're looking to start an online business or grow your agency at 2k per month, this is probably going to be interesting to you. And with that being said, hope everything is going well in your journey and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.